My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. I'll be able to make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach. So call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Now, if you panic in the teeth of last week's sell-off <laughs> and ran for the exits, sell, 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 sell. Well, you got to be kicking yourself right now. Dow surging 492 points. S&P jumping 2.07%. NASDAQ pulling 3.03%. <laughs> But there are no do-overs in this racket, people, which is why it's so important to get things right the first time. I often say that panic is not a strategy. And the past couple of weeks have been a perfect example of that. You would have done much better if you had stayed calm and sat tight, which has been the case for so often, most our entire lives. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to walk through this so you never forget it. A coroner's bear inquest because I don't want anyone making this mistake again who watches Mad Money. It all goes back to the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, okay? That's when we learned of the Omicron variant, although it hadn't been named yet. Just some new strain out of South Africa. Suddenly, journalists were speculating about all the new restrictions that we could get hit with as governments around the world steal themselves to take action. Now, I can't blame anyone for being frightened when the market opened on Friday morning. You had a full day of rumination with your family over Turkey, a family you might not have seen over a year. The, festiv- the time we, I don't know about you, but this time we began the festivities with a round of Abbott Labs Binex Now. Hey, that's become the kind of a, I don't know, an appetizer. Uh, you have to get tested, right? Fortunately, everyone was negative. But as I pondered my late mother's stream bean casserole, you know, the ones with the canned L and O onion rings, I thought, holy cow, what if my trusty Binex Now never leave home without it? Can't catch the new variant. What if they don't work? Don't worry, it turns out they do. Meanwhile, countries everywhere instantly closed their borders because the politicians never stopped fighting the last war. Of course, this seemed logical given that 10% of the 600 passengers who had traveled from South Africa to the Netherlands the day before had COVID, with presumably the majority having the new strain, right? Because it spreads much faster. Pretty logical. Always in the background, a steady drumbeat. Lockdown, 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 lockdown. That literally played out over and over as the market drew to its, op- to its open the day after Thanksgiving. OK, now we're talking about here. Now, I called in from home saying that you can't panic and sell into this maelstrom and you have to take a lockdown off the table. They're not coming back. Still it was a holiday session, one with few players, and there was havoc all over the place. The worst being the oil pits. Oil had become it had been so strong that even an actual release of crude from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve by President Biden meant nothing. But then oil met the Omicron strain, and it was like the Saudis decided to flood the world with petrol. Of course, the markets took this crash as an arbinger of what was going to come in stocks, and it was plain ugly. Dow closed, down 900 points. S&P shed more than 2%. Over that weekend, though, we didn't hear any new bad news. We all kept waiting for it, right? Remember? Well, we knew there had to be a new outbreak. We knew it was coming here, right? Perhaps we had to wait until we got them, uh, got here before we, you could buy anything. But sell, again, without more reports of rampant outbreaks and a spike in deaths, selling made no sense. Remember, this is the acceptable risk moment, people. Oh, and we all learned that the new strain was called Omicron, which was particularly disturbing. It sounded like a second-rate Michael Crichton knockoff. His stuff still holds up. Right then, we should have had a tell that maybe things weren't as bad as the media and the World Health Organization was making them out to be. The WHO doesn't want to get its pants caught down again, but apparently... They overcorrected. I knew I felt much better after listening to CBC's own Meg Terrell interview Pfizer CEO Albert Borla and Moderna CEO Stefan Bansell, both of whom sounded pretty sanguine about the new strain. I even asked Meg on the 9 o'clock show whether I was right to think that both gentlemen, whom I think are shoe-in for Times Persons of the Year, sounded pretty upbeat. I, I, I felt great. We all went home thinking good thoughts. Dow rallied 236 points far short of what it lost the previous session, but still certainly a positive. Of course, that was shattered last Tuesday when we read an interview in the night before that uh, Stefan Bensel from Moderna had given the Financial Times. It sounded like a wholesale repudiation of what he had just told May. Speaking of his own vaccine, Ban Selk, and I quote, said, there is no world, I think, where it could be at the same level of effectiveness we have with Delta, end quote. 
Then he talked about a, quote, material drop, end quote, in effectiveness, capping it all off by noting that all the scientists he talked to had told him, quote, this is not going to be good, end quote. Well, I mean, you want to see what happens when you have the most important person other than Borla in this whole thing, the guy who's got it right? What happens when he changes his mind? Well, you get, you go from here, that's the positive band cell, to here, the negative one. That interview crushed the entire stock market the next day. Who knew more about the, the, than the CEO of Moderna, right? We tried to rally, but we just couldn't get any traction. We, we didn't have any other news about, about Omicron. We had to rely on what Bansell had to say. That allowed for, for Wednesday, though, because nothing new again happened, to have a decent day. Not great, not bad. Uh, but it all unraveled Thursday when we heard that Apple was calling suppliers, telling them that they don't need more products. Sales were weak. We don't want any more product. We have way too many phones. That was the narrative. Now, I went on air to say that was just inconceivable. Apple doesn't do that. They don't. And even if they did, their suppliers wouldn't talk about it. Same time, though, we were beginning to get a different feeling about Omicron. No one in the media wanted to say it point blank, but we started to suspect that even if this strain was very infectious, it might be a lot less severe than Delta, especially if you're vaccinated. Now, fast forward to today. What have we learned here? Well, first, it turns out that, yes, Omicron's not going to redestroy the Western world. It's not the Delta variant 2.0. The fact that it's supplanting the Delta variant as the dominant strain may actually be a very good thing, because getting Omicron is more like getting a vaccine than getting COVID. And that's good news. Uh, we also learned that Apple didn't call its suppliers to roll back its orders. According to Katie Uberty, the Morgan Stanley analyst, who is what we call the axe in Apple, meaning the woman who has the best understanding of the stock and the most power, business is booming. And that's why she raised her price target from 164 to a sounding 200. If you took your cue from last week's panic, you would have sold your Apple down $157, off about 4% at the time, nearly 8% below where it closed tonight. If you simply held it, remember, if you owned Apple and didn't trade it, you'd have a nice two-week run to an all-time high of 171. It's trading further up after the close. Now, there's, that is the reason why I say I don't want you trading Apple. You know, let's talk about it after the close and why it's still going up. See, we got a report from a Japanese news outlet that Apple can't get enough supplies to meet demand. That's right. That instead of saying, hey, listen, we have too many supplies, now they're begging for supplies. You know what? Live by the sword, die by the sword. I take that story with a grain of salt, too. Supplier stories aren't to be trusted. But Morgan Stanley's Uberty is. Now, looking back, it's hard to believe that no one really seemed to consider the possibility that the Omicron strain might not be that severe. The authorities sure made it sound like the worst case scenario. Uh, was the only scenario. So did Stefan Bansell, a man whom you come to trust. He really annihilated the stock market. And I know he didn't mean to. But so far, it's been much better than feared. And it's certainly hard to believe Apple could have fallen 4% in a single session, taking down the whole tech edifice, especially its suppliers, all of which caught fire today when people realized that the story wasn't true. Why are these such good examples of panic? Because if you did nothing until you learned more, you may not look abandoned. If you shot first and asked questions later, you did terribly. It's a textbook example of why panic is not a strategy, unless you're deliberately trying to lose money. And I want you to use it as a reminder that most of the time, it pays to wait for cooler heads to prevail, rather than freaking out in a situation where everyone else is freaking out and lost their heads without complete information. The bottom line, look, it would have been great if you had bought stock somewhere near the lows. That's what I urge you to do, actually, even if you had to hold your nose, because we were simply too oversold. I was relying on technicals. But the cardinal sin here was selling stocks out of fear rather than sitting tight out of rationality. A lesson I hope to convey when our investing club meets for the first time this Thursday in a special call on how to prosper in 2022. I want you on it. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.